This is so strange. Uh, episode 30, something from everyone. It is just us this week. It is a solo episode. Uh, I've had this idea for a little bit. I can't tell if I am peaking or just too loud in my headphones, but we'll figure that out as we go. Uh, this will be my first ever solo episode. Uh, I guess I've tried stuff like this for like little YouTube videos in the past, and it kind of feels the same, just in a much more raw and organic format. Uh, I think next week we got two guests coming in, and they are going to be two awesome guests. Uh, and in the future, we got August looking like it's going to be a great month. Uh, I keep looking. I have a monitor over here, and my camera is kind of off to the center. I don't know where to look. I'm kind of overwhelmed and stressed out. But the goal is 100 episodes by 2025. That's just about one a week. That means I think there's like three or four weeks total that I could miss and still hit that goal. But we're going to make it happen. Uh, I think I know who I would like to have on for my 100th episode. And we'll see if I ever get there. We'll see if it makes it happen. Uh, I don't know. I think I entered the podcasting thing knowing that this is going to be a long haul and that it's not something that's going to happen overnight. But I do believe that if I keep watering this thing every week, then I don't know. It can't get smaller. It has to get bigger to some degree and it has to, I don't know. It's been a really fun adventure. And I think uh, a lot of the questions that I ask people are things that I have never really entered myself or not in this format. Uh, so I thought I would go through today and kind of tell you kind of how I got to where I am. I think normally what I'm doing is interviewing people and asking them, yeah, how they got to where they are and kind of the, the stories along the way. And I try and interject my own two cents here and there. But yeah, I try not to be selfish. I try not to hog the mic and I try to make it about them. And yeah, really, I don't know. I think ultimately I'm trying to learn from them too. I mean, that's, that's my goal. It's a thesis of this podcast is to learn something from everyone. And I believe I'm doing that every week. And part of that is letting, letting them talk. Uh, but I think if you are unfamiliar with me, if you don't know me that well, uh, you might not know how I got here, what this looks like, or yeah, I don't know. If you're not interested, that's cool. But if you are, then let's dive right into it. Uh, so in episode 13, um, in episode 13, I'm just checking through my notes here. I've got a screen recording, audio recording. We just got too many, too many recordings happening here. I'm a little, little overwhelmed. Um, a little sippy sippy. Um, episode 13, I had Sean Vogel on. We talked about this playthrough of Dear Youth. Um, so my journey into like videography, my journey into becoming a music video, music video maker, music videographer, I don't know, who cares? There's so many labels and titles that I'm just not interested in. The music photo community is up in arms this week, and I'm just happy, happy doing my own little thing over here. Uh, yeah. So my whole journey kind of starts back. Uh, I grew up kind of as an athlete, and some injuries forced me out of that lifestyle, and I felt like, a, yeah, right around the end of high school, I was then looking for something else to sink my time into, and I kind of chatted about some of that with uh, Dan Smolicom in episode three, and we kind of chatted about how becoming an, or being an athlete translated so well to music and was kind of a pretty easy transition for us, uh, and then that, so... I just kind of spawned into music and I started out trying to figure out how to play guitar and I'm terrible at it. I have no ability to play guitar and I don't really have any friends who are involved in that world too much yet. Uh, I just kind of knew that I liked the music. I liked listening to it. I liked the, the Good Charlotte's, the Avenged Sevenfolds, the Lincoln Parks of the world. And I wanted to be more involved in that world. So I decided I was going to figure it out. Uh, somewhere around this time, I also meet some buddies uh, in Set Sail at Sunrise. Shout out. I think there's a Set Sail at Sunrise sticker somewhere on the front of this laptop. Uh, and by the, by the way, if you are listening to this and not watching it, you're probably going to miss a lot of this because it's going to be kind of a multimedia extravaganza here of going down memory lane and showing a lot of the stuff that kind of made me where I am today. Um, but anywho, so starts out sports, gets into music, and I'm trying to figure out what to do. I meet some friends who are in Set Sail at Sunrise, uh, and they kind of inspire me that this is possible. I think they were the first people I met who were doing the local band thing and it really kind of lit a fire in me of like, oh, you don't need to, I don't know, I guess I'd always been a fan of my bands and never knew how to get from, uh, from a kid in high school to that world. And so seeing them doing it, doing a local band thing and becoming aware of, you know, small shows with 20 people at them instead of just going to the big shows. Yeah, I really felt like they kind of gave me a uh, gateway into this world and into this industry. Uh, and somewhere along that way, I think at the time, Sean Vogel was also still in uh, Set Sail at Sunrise. <laughs> Shout out to the good old days. Uh, and we talked about this on yeah, our episode. I think it was 13. I don't know if I said that or not already. That's going to happen a lot today. Um, but Vogel's on episode 13, and we talked through a little bit of this cover. Uh, I wanted to play two seconds of it uh, just because we talked about it, and I think we watched it pre-episode, and I never quite shared it on the episode. Um, so yeah, <laughs> here's two seconds of that, my multimedia extravaganza here. Uh, I don't quite know... Uh, so this is me learning how to play guitar and telling, sh uh, I'll go back a little bit. Actually, before I dive in, uh, this is me learning how to play guitar. And so I, at some point, have been covering songs in my bedroom a little bit, uh, which I'll get to in just a moment. And I decided I wanted to do something a little bit more interesting. Uh, and so I hit up Sean Vogel, who'd been advertising that he had a camera for photography or said he wanted to take photos. 
And I said, well, hey, dude, what if we use your photo camera to take video? And then I'll edit it. I'll take care of it from there. So that's what we did. We filmed this in his yard uh, <laughs> at his parents' house back in the day. Uh, so this would be, I think, 2016, I decided. Um, and, yeah, we met up. We learned to play guitar. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I, we sat on a rock. I can barely play the song and not play it very well. Uh, but I did also mix and master the audio, which also sounds terrible. Um, but I was enjoying watching this, and there's this clip here right now of me just like walking in for no reason. And who knows why I let this in, probably because I played the part so wrong that I needed some B-roll, and this was the only B-roll that existed. But now, as a, as a video person, it's hilarious to imagine leaving that in as just like a, a dude walking into a forest. But I don't think it came out terrible. I think, yeah, Sean did his job well, and we were just both beginners, both learning. Um, but this is me. This is me before I had a camera, before I was really figuring out anything. Ooh, and I shot of me pulling my pants up. You gotta love that for the boys. Um, but I don't know. It was a really fun thing. I think it really inspired something in me of like, yeah, I by this point, I was realizing I didn't quite like the instrument. I wasn't in love with it. Uh, but I really did like filming the covers. I really liked making them. I liked editing them. I've just, uh, yeah, video is something that was interesting to me for a while. Um, before this, or the thing that gets me into this then, is these old covers. And these are probably the more embarrassing of the two. The Sean Vogel one is kind of like a happy beginner moment. This one is, is rough. This is pre-beginner. This is the stuff that I would love not to share. But also, I think it's an important part of the journey. I think when I'm chatting with people on the podcast, the thing I value most and what I'm most interested in is them being open and honest. And uh, yeah, <laughs> I can only do the same when I'm now here on my own and trying to figure out how to do this thing. Um, so yeah, here's uh, Half Faith in Me cover as a data member. Uh, and I filmed this on a bass I had, two guitars. So I think it was a lead and a rhythm was the idea. Um, I'll let that start kind of playing. Uh, and... I thought I was the shit. I thought this lead was so much fun to play. I thought figuring out how to play it on the bass was like cool to have the three instruments. Uh, and I, this might be filmed on the camera actually. I thought it was gonna be filmed on my laptop, but I can see my laptop kind of here in the side. Um, but the good old Scarlet 2i2 that everyone has that I believe I still have to this day. Um, I still have the guitar. I think I sold the bass at some point for camera gear, but that is neither here nor there. Uh, this was, yeah, filmed in my parents' basement. It's filmed in our guest bedroom in, the, in my parents' house. And again, I think this was me putting it on YouTube and trying to figure something out, but it's, it's a wild journey. I mean, this isn't a, this is the most flattering video. It doesn't quite hold up. Um, uh, me trying to sing. That's so sick. I don't know. It, it's not great. It doesn't hold up <laughs> per se. Uh, but I think nonetheless, it's an important part of kind of who I was and where I, how I got to be where I am. Uh, and it started, yeah, with just this kind of fire of like, I'm going to figure it out. I don't know how it's going to go. I don't know if it's going to go well, but I was determined to try and at least, I think, brave enough to step in the arena. I've had, I think it's a Teddy Roosevelt quote about the man in the arena. And there's just the idea that like, you just got to step in and figure stuff out. And if you're trying to from the outside plan, if I tried to plan the perfect cover or master the song, or the perfect audio, like I never, never would have gotten into it. I never would have done anything. Um, but there's a freedom in just deciding you're going to do something and say, I don't know if it's going to be good or bad, but it's going to be done. Uh, and then you kind of go from there. I think that's been my whole mentality this whole, long, whole time of like, yeah, I can't control how good I am today, but I can try and get better for tomorrow. And if each project I'm getting better and better, then yeah, that'll grow over time. And I trust that I can do that. Um, but it has to start somewhere, and unfortunately, this is where it started. Um, nice, nice. I have, I felt like I was doing, <laughs> I felt like I was doing great through there, and then all of a sudden it hits me again that I'm alone in my basement. Uh, so the other thing I pulled up here is a photo of this. I realize that a lot of people obviously haven't been to the studio, uh, but it is very much my basement. It is very much <laughs> uh, a space that I'm happy to lie about on camera and happy to lie and make it look better. Uh, but on screen now I have a photo of the space. Can I make this bigger somehow? That probably works. Uh, this photo <laughs> was taken right before I had Sarah on. So the uh, podcast starts just like against this wall and everything pre Sarah is just with this wall as a background. Uh, but then I decided to add the next wall, move us at the corner. And I set this up the day before I come down the next day, right before about to film with Sarah and this had all fallen down. So I had a very fun hour or two of panic of trying to get everything ready to go right before Sarah got here and it all worked out. I think, yeah, it's still, <laughs> still hanging on the wall over it's that wall. Um, yeah. We're hanging in there, but that was the least fun thing. But yeah, this is what the space looks like. This is the basement. I mean, I'm I'm in a basement very much right now talking to myself on a microphone, which is cool, I guess. Um, but yeah, 
So that's kind of how I get uh, introduced to cameras and I start believing there's a way that this can happen. Uh, and along the way, after filming with Vogel, I go, yeah, I don't really like the guitar part. I'm not going to keep doing this. I'm not going to keep hiring someone to film me. It's just not the place that I feel most comfortable and most excited to be. But I did go out and decide I was going to try a camera. So I, uh, at this point, was still in college. I took some time off of school to just figure out what I wanted to do. And I tried a bunch of stuff, uh, a bunch of different employments. Of I was lifeguarding. I had an accounting internship. I did a lot of different things during that time. Uh, and one of the things I did was buy a camera. Um, at the time, mostly it was to record covers. So I think that's where this Have Faith in Me cover was recorded on. But it was also to shoot shows. I kind of realized that I was spending money on this thing that... I was only going to use once in a while when I could film and learn guitar stuff. So it was worth figuring out how to use it more often. Uh, and growing up in my room, I had posters all over my wall of just concert photos. And I don't think, I don't think at the time I quite knew I was inspired by them. But in hindsight, it's like, oh, yeah, I, I spent my whole life in my room staring at these photos of just the coolest things cut out of AP Magazine. Uh, poor thing. <laughs> but I guess we all kind of did to some degree. But, yeah, somehow I loved those enough that it was inspiring and fun to pretend and as I get my own camera, it becomes exciting then to try it out. Uh, so I go shoot my first show. And my first show was, I guess, as much of a disaster as anyone else's. Um, <laughs> but my, my first show was in then 2016. So it was January 2016. And I'm trying to open the link here. I can't multitask at all. That's what I'm slowly learning over time. But I remember uh, just watching YouTube videos, figuring out how to get photo passes and figure out what this thing was, reading forums. I don't remember exactly where where I ended up reading, but certainly it was just, yeah, whatever get my hands on. Um, I didn't really know anyone in the world. And <laughs> this is my first show. Uh, so I found a little show at the Webster. Uh, this is January 8th, 2016. Uh, I found a show at the Webster. It was the first show happening, first show of the year. And I decided that was going to be the first show. Uh, it was not music I was aware of. It was kind of, there's some kind of like European band. And so I shot an email. I knew I had to email the, the press contact, press person. So I emailed them and said, hi, I'm Peter. I don't have a portfolio, but I would love to shoot the show. Uh, and for some reason, they said, sure, here's a photo pass. Uh, and of course, in hindsight, I come to find out that this is at the Webster Underground, which doesn't require a photo pass at all. But nonetheless, I asked for one. I got one. They comped my ticket for my first ever show with no portfolio. Uh, and I don't know why they did that. I think it's cool that they approved me. Uh, and I, obviously, yeah, it was cool. They gave me an opportunity. But I feel like it was a, a bold move to approve someone with no credentials. Um, but obviously, it worked out well. I, I'm glad they took a blind, a blind faith in me. Uh, and these are the photos that came out. So I haven't actually looked at these. I kind of dragged them all from a hard drive into this Dropbox so I could look at them. And I think they're noisy. I think, yeah, obviously, Lightroom's new AID noise would help these be a lot better. They're not great, but they're not terrible. I don't know. I think there's this one's pretty cool. I don't know. I don't think I quite knew what I was doing. Obviously, I didn't know what I was doing. I was still trying to figure out how the camera worked. I was trying to figure out what the lens were and what ISO and aperture was. Uh, and yeah, clearly I didn't figure it out too well because it's all so noisy. Uh, and I think probably soon after this, I got a flash and figured that out. Um, but this is the good old Webster Underground. This is where I spent so much time shooting. I've shot Beartooth here. I've shot most local bands here, uh, or most of our local bands here. Um, I think Beartooth's got to be one of the bigger acts I've seen there. I've seen Riff Raff there. Uh, <laughs> This is one of the photos that I remember sticking out to me over time, uh, and I really enjoyed this one. And I don't know. I don't feel like I, when I was shooting this show, I was super anxious. I was super nervous, and I don't remember how much fun I had. I just remember that it was it was addicting somehow. I shot this one show, and that was that. Like I felt like I shot a show and just suddenly kept adding more shows to my calendar and kept trying to find more ways to be involved in it. And I don't quite know. I don't know. I must have enjoyed it. Uh, but I don't feel like, I don't know, I think I just love the world. I think I loved having access to the world. Um, and the photos were, were fun to take and fun to figure out. And it was a challenge that was fun to solve. Um, but up until this point, I don't think I'd ever really been interested in art. I don't think I was interested in the compositions of photos or what makes a photo good. Or, yeah, I just kind of was showing up and saying, what looks cool? <laughs> how, do I, how do I make something look cool? Um, I think one of the best parts here is adding a logo on this work that I did for free that no one was ever going to steal. But that's okay. We all live and learn. Um, wow, memory lane. I remember the show wasn't very well attended. And so I had this challenge of like, how do I, yeah, how do I make it look cool? I knew I didn't want to show an empty floor. And pretty quickly you realize you take a photo and it looks empty and you kind of feel secondhand embarrassment. And it's not, yeah, not, not ideal for anyone. Uh, and so I think that was part of the thing is I loved this idea that I could take photos 
that made the show look cool. It looked fun. It looked like an exciting place. Uh, and in reality, it was a pretty, pretty modest show. Uh, it was pretty modestly attended. And yeah, I think something in that and that ability to make something look so much larger than life was really enticing to me. Uh, I think it still is. I think I often joke that cameras are about lying. It's, you know, this basement, going back to the photo I shared a moment ago, wherever the heck that went. Um, I probably closed it. Um, but going back to the photo, it's like, this is, <laughs> this is my basement that I'm sitting in right now. Uh, and that's all it is. There's nothing, no trickery here. It's just knowing lighting and uh, these panels from Amazon to glue to the wall. And... Yeah, I think that process of being able to turn any space into a production space is a really fun challenge to me and part of what I enjoy about music videos. Um, and so as I continued along that jersey, jersey, along that journey, uh, by 2016, uh, so this is February 2016, is a Light in the Cave tour with the IC Stars headlining. Uh, and so I got approved to shoot two shows on that. So it was the show near me in Hartford and the one up the road in Worcester. Um, here, as I try and multitask, I'm going to pause for a second, cut out two seconds, and then come back. Hell yeah. All right. We are back. A little, little pause there just to kind of get myself situated, take a sip, pause, make sure that I'm not completely losing my mind. Uh, I can't stress enough how crazy and weird it is to talk to a camera in my basement. Um, but we need an episode this week, and we're going to make an episode happen this week. Uh, and I think that's something I learned the hard way here uh, is that it's just about doing stuff and trying and failing and then trying to make it better once you failed and figure it out what, what the failure was. Um, so we're trying it. Uh, but anywho, so I get into shooting, and so I shot that first show, that kind of local show that wasn't too well attended. Uh, and then, there's, yeah, get the bug. I start shooting everything I can. I start shooting a lot of local shows. Uh, and I got to shoot Icy Stars on their Light in the Cave tour. Uh, so this is like two months after I start shooting. And they come through, and I get to shoot, yeah, two shows on the tour. Uh, most of the photos, I think, again, they're cool to look back on as memories. I think it's just a... It's wild to me that I can still remember standing there and being in these places and being with these people. And I don't know. It's all very, uh, the time capsule thing about camera has always been interesting to me. Uh, and this photo, actually, I remember is one that stood out in my brain of like, oh, he's looking at the camera. I'm seen. I'm, I'm a part of this world. And it was kind of an addicting thing to be like, yeah, get this little taste of like, oh, I'm not, I'm not a ghost. There is some value that I could offer this world that is so inspiring to me. Uh, and who knows what he was seeing. But uh, and who knows what he thought of me and yeah, who cares so, to some extent. Uh, it, but I think what matters there is what I took away from it. And I took away a feeling of inspiration. I was in a, a good place and it was an exciting moment to, to watch that come to life. Um, but yeah, we kept shooting here. The, <laughs> the best story I think from this is going to be the, like the last photos here. These I do remember. This is one of those that stands in my brain. It is burned into my brain. Uh, I've definitely told the story to some degree on my channel before. Uh, I think in an old YouTube video somewhere, but <laughs> it was the worst. Uh, these are promos. So after the second date of the show, I go up to IC Stars and I say, hey, I'd love to take some group photos of you guys, you know, interested in promos. Uh, and they say, sure, which uh, I don't know. I'm whatever, 18 at the time. I'm still a super fan of the band and of the world. And this is just the craziest opportunity I could ever imagine to have them say yes. And for some reason, accept this opportunity for me uh, or give me the opportunity rather. So we go. And I take the photos, and I remember in the moment realizing they were going to come out terrible because I couldn't close my aperture enough to get everyone in focus. Uh, I didn't have enough light. It was too dark, and I was in such a panic, and I was so, like, starstruck and trying to be cool and calm and collected and, like, not let them know that I was freaking out, that what I did instead was just not do what I needed to do to make the shoot go well. So what I should have done is say, hey, guys, let's pause for a second. I'm going to go grab my phone light. I'm going to grab someone, one of my friends from outside, and I'm going to have them hold their flashlight or whatever. And we're going to add a little more light on you guys. Or like, there's some creative way here to figure out how to add more light and how to make this thing brighter and possible. Because these photos, I remember instantly knowing was like, oh, this isn't going to work. I fucked it. I fucked it. I fucked it. I fucked it. And thankfully, I didn't. Thankfully, yeah, I guess maybe it didn't matter. Maybe if I take these perfectly, my whole life goes differently from this point. But I don't think so. I think, yeah, I think probably my life would have been the same no matter how good these photos were. Um, but I take them. So I end up having one that's kind of in focus on the people in the front and one that's in focus on the people in the back and focus of everyone else. Uh, and they're not horrific, but they're not great. And I remember being so disappointed and almost like embarrassed that I'd let them down in this opportunity. And it really stuck with me. It's just like, a, I don't know, one of the hard knocks along the way of like being embarrassed to send it to them after and the guy messages me and he's like, you know, how's this? You know, did you, did you take them? Can we see them? And it was just this like, oh fuck, how do I? And I think I ended up sending them and pretending I'm proud of them. 
knowing that I'm just kind of embarrassed by them and knowing that they're going to be very unimpressed by them as well. Uh, and it was just kind of a sobering, like, uh, I don't know, a reality of the world. I think up until this point, I felt like things were going fast and you kind of get that, uh, those beginner gains, that exciting rush of like, oh, I'm going to do everything. This is all mine. This is easy. And this was the first time where it was like, oh, I got a lot to learn. We got a lot to keep going. Um, and I'm sure up to this point, I've been focused on learning other things. But yeah, this felt like a real wake up call and a real kind of punch in the gut of like, as I'm walking into the shoot, I'm going, oh, I, I, this is it. This is my, my ticket out. And then not only is it, yeah, never going to be that, but I didn't even do a good enough job that I would want to hire me. And it's like, well, how am I going to impress these guys who are doing this for a living if I can't even impress me? Uh, and so I think that's kind of where it starts to spiral for me even more of like, well, then what is a good photo? What is wrong with this? How could I have made this better? How does this thing start to make sense? Uh, and I think back to, I think uh, a lot of the guests I've had on have talked about learning things note by note and just the process of slowing things down and literally slowing their 200 beats per minute down to <laughs> one beat per minute and figuring out exactly what the hell is happening in the song and building from that. And I think this was a similar process for me and why I enjoy hearing so many of the band people talk about their similar journey. Uh, Cause it's kind of comforting to know like, oh yeah, we all had to go through that. That's not like a, we see people on stage and we assume that they just spawned there somehow. And it's like, no, this is photos like these, unfortunately are what got me to where I am. Um, but I keep growing, uh, and then a, about a year and a half later from this is when I get to shoot Good Charlotte. Uh, and this is at the Boston House of Blues. Uh, I'm touch my notes here, make sure I'm hitting stuff I want. Yeah, this is the Boston House of Blues, uh, and this shoot stands out as just like a, a peak kind of euphoria moment to me. Of uh, Yeah, Good Charlotte is one of those bands that I am falling in love with. They're one of the first bands that I really uh, am obsessed with. Uh, I had my, my childhood babysitter at the time who was my idol, he was God. Uh, he burned like a, a CD of Good Charlotte's Young and the Hopeless, and we listened to it in the car on the way home, my mom would play it, and I would just make her keep replaying the anthem uh, to the point where that song just doesn't work on the CD anymore. And so to then shoot them, whatever, two years into filming, or into photographing rather, was just surreal. Like I'd never believed this would do anything at all, and now that I have a, a ticket to drive two hours to Boston to one of the more historic sites. It's right across the street from Fenway Park. It just is a place that feels rich with history to me and it's still one of my favorite venues. Uh, and then to go there to see the band that kind of started this whole whole journey for me, uh, it was just really transcendent. It was one of the few shows that like really, really sticks out as poignant. I think most of them, when I look back at the photos, I can kind of transport myself in time, but a lot of them are just kind of shows that I went to. Uh, and this is one of the few that I look back as like just a really monumental moment um, and I think the photos came out fine. I don't think they're, uh, yeah, I would love to believe I could do better now. And maybe if I went back and re-edited them, they would also come out a little better. Um, but I don't think they came out bad. I think they came out kind of what they needed to do, but it was, it was surreal. I remember kind of shooting and making a conscious decision after my first couple songs of like, I don't want to touch my camera. And I just kind of put it away, took my headphones out, my earplugs out, and just sat there and let myself kind of soak in the moment and, uh, appreciate what it was to be there that day and yeah it still is kind of surreal and looking back at these photos is giving me chills right now because um, yeah up in this little balcony area was where I stood and just said I don't I'm not gonna shoot I, I did my job I did enough of my job and it was tempting to just go and shoot everything and keep taking photos trying to get the perfect photo um, but I don't know I'm glad I had the, the, the foresight in the moment of like no just stay here and suck this in for a second uh, and yeah, it was being here in this balcony and just watching all these people soak in and staring down at the photo pit and appreciating that I had been down there and that I had, yeah, somehow <laughs> gone from buying a camera off Amazon to try to ending up in this venue shooting the childhood band, their band of my childhood dreams. Uh, and I think this was their first comeback tour. So it was kind of a, a significant moment all around. Uh, and yeah, it really just stood out. And again, it was one of those transformative moments of like, oh, this is possible, this is exciting. Uh, and I think one of the, the flip sides there, one of the downsides perhaps, is I almost felt like I had done it, of like I can continue to shoot bands, but for what? Um, and what makes these, what makes this special? What makes this different? Um, and I think somewhere in here is where the video starts to come along of like, it's cool that I can go up and shoot these bands and their performances, but I'm really interested in crafting my own thing. I want to create something that is is unique, that that I feel is is new to the world where I feel like I'm pushing our our industry forward. I want to feel like I'm supporting the bands that I, that's uh, such an awkward thing to say, such a bold thing to say, but I think it is true. I think 
um, inspired and d determined to give back to the bands that I grew up listening to. Um, maybe not to those bands specifically, but to the bands, the future generation of them, and to help empower the next generation of bands to become what they what they were for me. Uh, and I guess to some degree, this podcast is a way to help other people become what I did. Like I'm, I'm really proud and really happy with the journey I've been on, and you know, of course, very unsatisfied with it and still looking forward. But uh, it's been a fun one, and it's been a fun one through moments like this. Um, but somewhere in here is where the video itch, I think, kind of gets really, really picked off to, or picked up to me of like, yeah, how do I uh, how do I make my own thing? How do I create and contribute more more than I feel like I was? Uh, and so we figured out music videos. Another quick two second pause. Hell yeah. I said my goal was half an hour. We're coming right up on it. We're at 26 minutes. So. <laughs> we're getting there a little bit more. Uh, we're getting to the fun part now. I think this is at least where it starts to get more in interesting to watch and to listen to. Uh, so this is Inkscape. Uh, Inkscape. Here, let me start from the beginning. It's full screen. Let's get some sound here. Um, awesome. So this is an instrumental track. So this is Inkscape. Uh, I wrote this with my boy Chris Johansson, so in our recordings. Uh, and this was me saying, I want to make music videos. I want to be involved in this world. But I have no way in. I, no one's going to trust me to make a music video. A music video is a big commitment. And for very good reasons, no one's willing to just trust you and be kind of a crash dummy for that first video. Um, so then it was, OK, well, if I don't have any clients, how do I make a client? Or how do I make something I can show to people I would like to be my client or people I would like to work with, people I want to help build their thing? And my buddy at the time was in a similar scenario with audio stuff. Like He believed that he had you know, stuff to contribute to the audio world and wasn't quite getting the opportunities he wanted. So how does he put a song out? What does he do to make his name more more reputable? And so we collaborate on this thing. And uh, this is the worst of the three. There's two more songs we did together. And I think both of them still hold up. I'm still very happy with them. This one's rough. Uh, we green screened in the studio. And this is probably one of my first green screen videos. It's probably one of the first times that I attempted green screen. And it's not terrible. It's not great. Um, doing handheld stuff with green screen I'm watching now is kind of a wild idea because I, I, sh I should be motion tracking everything. Um, but I don't know. I don't think this comes out terrible. I think if I'd added in some like motion blur, uh, yeah, definitely some blur would have helped this out a lot and definitely like animating these overlays so they're not so static feeling. Um, but the idea was there. And again, I think it's just me trying to figure out like, hey, I'm not where I want to be. What is one thing I can do to get me closer? Um, and <laughs> that's that's what I did. That's what I did here. Um, I don't think it's terrible. It's a minute and a half long. It's up on my YouTube channel if you want to watch it. Uh, yeah, it holds up. I think the memory there is the strong part. And again, it's um, so many of the bands I talk to get so caught up on making the perfect thing. They get so caught up on trying to figure out when the song should come out exactly, what the song should sound like exactly, what the video should look like exactly. And there's so many preci precision details that are important. It is important to get things right. But none of those details matter if the thing never comes out. None of those things matter if you never make it to the finish line. And I think for me, I recognize that early on of like, yeah, I am still very early in this process. It's not worth making the perfect music video. Just let's keep, let's start making stuff. Let's figure out what the next step is. And the first step of that is trying something. Um, so that was what I started. That was where f number one, uh, number two is Stormborn. Um, there's definitely, I think, behind the scenes videos of the build for Stormborn. Uh, Stormborn's also with Chris. And then we featured a bunch of our friends in this one. Uh, so this one, I think this is the only photo I have from behind the scenes. Uh, it's interesting because, again, I don't really play guitar that well. Uh, and the first song we kind of wrote somewhat so that I could play guitar a little bit. And this one was written as a song. This one kind of omitted me. And it was a fun experience of, yeah, this is a basement build again. I think, like I said, there's a, a video on my YouTube channel of how I built this with LED tube, some kind of budget build LED thing is maybe the title. Um, but we built this. And again, this was me trying to prove that I could do something. And it was a really good experience to learn to play guitar on camera and get a sense of what artists are doing, what artists are going through. Uh, and I think it's still valuable to me. I think I've still talked on the podcast a lot about wanting to learn how to play drums. And that's motivated from a similar place of like, uh, how do I gain more empathy for what the artists are going through when I'm filming them? And how do I then use that to make better content? And I think the more I can understand the instruments and the people performing the art, the more I can kind of understand what I'm doing and yeah, use those two in synergy to make the best product possible. Um, so in hindsight, this was a really valuable experience at the time. It felt like I was playing dress up. It felt like the craziest thing to hold this. I think it's an eight string guitar, seven string guitar. I don't know. It's not mine. Uh, I don't know how to play the song, but I practiced enough to learn how to fake it on camera. 
Uh, and again, I think it was good to figure out what bands are going through and they have to headbang and do all those little details. Um, but without further ado, here is Stormborn as I open the link. Nice. Look at this multimedia extravaganza. I think this is also available. Uh, this is in my basement. So this is Stormborn directed by Peter JT. It's still written on the ceiling. It's like this is filmed pretty much exactly where I'm sitting right now. Um, that photo was taken was exactly where I'm sitting. Uh, and this is it. This is... Uh, the back wall of the podcast right here you can see is and then over here is the side wall that fell when Sarah was coming through and probably right about where I'm standing is where I'm sitting right now uh, it's kind of unbelievable the amount of stuff that I've gotten done in these these shitty walls but it's a good time uh, let's get a little audio here this song bumps um, so this is me Chris Johansson uh, Chris Cameo Peter Murphy Bobby Neighbors and Dave Pazic. actually I don't think Chris Cameo is in this one I think he's in the next one um, but five of us, two guest features, uh, guitar solo feature. It ripped. This song's so sick. Um, and again, this was a follow up to InScape. So, this was a follow up to me and Chris doing something just us on guitar and saying, cool, we feel like that went well. We feel like we want to keep doing this. Um, so, how do we take it to the next level? How do we show more people what we're capable of and about and interested in doing? Uh, so, we kind of felt, recruited what we felt like was, was an all star team of homies and made something um as i'm watching this now i'm remembering that the lights are fun uh because they're flashing which is a very cool effect here's our breakdown uh the flashing lights was cool because they are completely done manually so <laughs> they are kind of rigged to just random surge protectors around the room uh, and there was a couple of people sitting there just flicking switches back and forth on the surge protectors to kind of create this random lighting effect um but this was the best. I remember just so much fun. It was such a great day. Uh, it, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I feel like I could edit this footage now and make this video like genuinely cool. Uh, I don't know if it holds up perfectly, but it holds up well enough. And it's just a great memory for me. It's so much fun to look back on. Um, ah, Bobby, you rip. Dreamwake rips. Shout out to the boys. A Polyphia solo. This was, yeah, great time. Great video. Um, yeah, I think that's most of the story here. And again, I think this is me starting to figure out how I can pitch to more people, how I can show what I'm doing more, um, and just trying to figure it out. And I didn't really want to play guitar. I knew this was never going to be a band, but I thought it was a fun chance for us to, yeah, kind of a homie project. I think homie song was always the working title of it. Uh, and it was exactly that. I think there's one last breakdown here that we'll hear and then we'll move on. Shout out Peter Murphy, dude, you rip. It's funny, the... Oh, I forgot we did this. We cut the front lights in the breakdown. I should revisit that idea. Um, yeah, so we cut the, cut the front lights here and then film a lot of it on a tripod to create some of these like, glitchy effects. Damn. This is so much cool that I remembered it. I was gonna like wait to be embarrassed by this one, but no, this shit rips. This is so sick, I would probably I wouldn't release this today. I would edit it differently and do stuff a little differently. Uh, I would move the subjects away from the background so there's a little more blur. Um, but man, that holds up. That shit rips. Um, yeah, from there, I think we wanted to yeah try a homie song, but we knew we didn't want to do the same thing again. Uh, so our final effort at this was Fear Eater. Uh, Fear Eater also has some behind the scenes photos. Uh, and this one's fun because it's a collaboration of like metal, rap. There's a bunch of uh, my buddies brother who does masks was involved in this uh tom novotny he was episode maybe six four five somewhere in there uh his brother joe does masks uh, and he's so sick i think it's evergrade productions maybe now on instagram i hope that's the right instagram name if it's not my bad um but here are the few photos was i able to find all of them i don't know this looks like it was some of them only um but this was best this is built again in my basement this is pilots of wood uh that i had built i went out and found some tires on the side of the road the pallets of wood also from from the side of the road i took some extra two by fours to like fasten it all together and we we filmed a music video here um again this is basically probably where i'm sitting right now these two videos were filmed in the exact same spot give or take they were facing different directions um but yeah having joe come in and graffiti this and having joe do the masks just made this video so sick 
Uh, Mike Mangan came in and killed it on vocals. Tom Novotny crushed it on the rap. Uh, this is the one with Chris on bass, uh, Chris Cameo on bass, and me and Chris playing guitar in it. Uh, and this one is, to me, the peak. I, I love this one. It stands up. Without further ado, let's get the song playing here. Um, it's it's so cool. Um, <laughs> this is one of those songs that I still would enjoy listening to today, or still enjoy listening to today. Um, I don't know if the video holds up quite as well. Um, I think, yeah, I think the concept's cool. I think the idea was really cool. I think I would do this one a little differently now if I were to do it again. Um, but man, this one was fun. And it was fun to, yeah, kind of combine the rap and metal worlds and try to figure out what this was. I remember when I walked in, Chris thought I was crazy to try and uh, make this happen. Uh, and I was, it was a crazy idea, but he made it happen. He made it work. Um, This shit's so cool. Um, but yeah, this was filmed more or less exactly where I'm sitting right now. And it's kind of the final step to me of like, I started from filming guitar covers and trying to figure out like, where where does this go? Um, and finally, by this point, I figured out the music videos, I think, were where I wanted to pursue and what I was most interested in. Uh, and this was kind of the final, yeah, it was the final homie project, the final project we kind of volunteered to pull off together and make happen. Um, after this, I think we all kind of took off and went our separate ways and became busier with, yeah, better work, better things to be a part of, uh, which is all great. But uh, this is, yeah, just a moment in time where I think things finally came together for me and it feels very full circle um, from that full sitting in the backyard of Sean Vogel's <laughs> yard to finally sitting in my own basement making this happen. <laughs> Mike Ramps, dude. There's a mask. I used to use, used to use something more visual effects. I think I like to use stuff practically, and I like stuff that's cleaner now. Um, but this is a really like messy video. I mean, messy in a cool way here. Um, we'll continue exploring that. Um, but yeah, that is kind of how I got to where I am. Uh, I think since then it's been about a hundred music videos that I'm at, or I'm closing in on that. I think I have a YouTube playlist that is at 92 ish. So everything I've done is on there. Uh, but I know it's missing a couple. I know there's some that have been taken down, some that never made it out or whatever reason. So yeah, hundred ish videos since then. But yeah, um, if you're seeing this, I guess I liked it enough to release it. If you're not seeing this, then I wasted my afternoon, but I had a good time doing it. Uh, if you liked it, let me know. Uh, I won't do these very often, but I'll do it once in a while. I think it's fun to look back. Uh, there's some piece of wisdom in my brain that I got from a podcast called The Six Figure Creative. Uh, and they say something often to the effect of like, we need to be reminded more than we need to be taught. Uh, and I think it's very true. I think I often need to be reminded of the, the journey that this started as and really just be inspired by all the work that it took to get here and really appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully you guys also learned something. Hopefully there is someone who can benefit from this. Uh, if not, then again, I sat in my basement talking to myself, uh, which is cool by me, I guess. Um, awesome. Thank you for joining me. Uh, if you, I don't know, normally I try and plug stuff at the end, but we're good. Uh, maybe like the episode, subscribe to the podcast, rate it wherever you're listening, have some fun, be a good person, uh, make someone's life better today. <laughs>